What up, though? What's the difference between port 141, port 61, and port 69? Hey, let's talk about the differences, baby. I feel like we playing dominoes in that thing. Big six to the board. Let's go! Boom! Hey, whenever you have that beautiful day in your life and you decide that you want to become a pilot and you've made that firm, hard decision, you're going to find that there's multiple pathways that you can take for you to become a pilot. There's different types of training that you can go through to become a pilot, and they are defined in these various ports that you may pe hear people refer to when they're talking about these numbers like port 61 and port 141. That's the main thing that you wanna understand is that, oh, I decided to become a pilot, I have different pathways I can take. Just like anything else in life, think about it like school. If you're trying to get your high school diploma or your college diploma, whatever you want to do, there's multiple ways you can go about doing that. You can go to a traditional university and sit inside a traditional classroom. You can also do it online. You can be homeschooled. There's a variety of different paths and one isn't necessarily better than the other. It's a lot about lifestyle and also too having a strong sense of self-awareness and understanding the way that you learn. The same rules applies when you get ready to select which path that you want to take for you to become a pilot. Is it part 61, part 141, or hey, Part 69. <laughs> Let's get into that thing. Let go! Hey, so under the federal aviation regulations, they've declared that it's two different pathways that you can take to become a pilot. You can take Port 61 or Port 141. They will define these in the structure that they would like you to follow to become a pilot following these two paths. So we're going to talk about each one of them and then we're going to get into a little bit of maybe the pros and cons to each one. But those pros and cons are going to be very subjective and based on who you are as a person, your learning style, and your current lifestyle or everything that you got going on in life. Running. So the first one on the list is Port 61. You may know a few people and a few pilots who have trained under Port 61. Port 61 is offered at flight schools. It's also an instructor who's working independently, local flight clubs, someone flying out of their own aircraft as an instructor and teaching that method can all train and help you train under Port 61. The minimum requirements for Part 61, you're going to be looking at about 250 hours to get a commercial certificate. And you're going to need about 1,500 hours, 1,500 of them things to get your airline transfer pilot certificate. As you hear a lot of people maybe going for those 1,500 hours and building their time, that's exactly what they're doing in the pathway that they're taking to try to get there. That Part 61 has a lot of benefits to it if you decide to go that route. But that's what you're looking at, those two big numbers. 250 for the minimum. Again, these are just minimum requirements to get your commercial and then of course 1500 to get the airline transfer pilot certificate. It's immediately when you start looking at the criteria for part 141, you're going to notice a difference. Those minimums are going to be lower. If you decide to take the part 141 route, now you're looking at about a 190 hour minimum to get the commercial instead of the 250 on the port 61 and you're looking at roughly between a thousand to twelve hundred to get the airline transfer pilot certificate which is different of course than the 1500 hours so the bar of hours of minimum hours is a little bit lower on the port 141 but it isn't just easy in terms of just picking one and hey 141 has less hours so i'm going to go that route there's a whole other piece of the pie that you want to be considering as well and that is the delivery of the information and how things are structured and based on your lifestyle and learning abilities let's run a little bit of that stuff right now let go the key word that you want to remember your key takeaway to help you define part 61 is flexibility it gives you the flexibility if you go that flight path to get become a pilot in a variety of different areas so yes it requires you to have a few more hours then of course taking the part 141, but you have flexibility in a variety of different areas. For number one, you have flexibility in terms of scheduling, scheduling your flights, working with your lifestyle. This is very key. Let's just say that you have other things going on and you can't fly as frequently as flying full time. You can only fly once a week or once every couple weeks or t twice and your schedules is all over the place. It may be one way right now and then next week it's different. And then a month from now it's different you may want to consider going the port 61 route. This is never really the same, it's never really consistent. You don't, your availability is a lot different. It gives you the flexibility. All you have to do is make sure you work those hours out 
with your CFI. So that's one of the keys about flexibility with part 61. Secondarily, we talked about the CFI. It gives you the flexibility of being able to choose your CFI. So just like when you were at university or when you were in any other class structure and you wanted to pick the cool instructor or the one that was really compatible to your personality because you thought it was going to help you learn more, if you're looking for some of the best tips so you can find the best CFI, there's a video on this page detailing how you can get the perfect CFI for you. Hey, one time, link at the end of this video, where the links be at. So part 61 gives you that flexibility and being able to choose your CFI and choose someone after you've vetted them out and you understand that this is the person that you want to ride with you and take you through the process there. So you have the flexibility of choice there as well. Then lastly, part 61 gives you the flexibility when it comes to your training and the overall structure. It's a little bit more loosely based, so you're not following a hardcore designated curriculum. What you're doing is you're partnering with your CFI and going down the best flight path for you to get you to that pilot goal at the end, which of course is you becoming a pilot and receiving your pilot certificate. So you don't have to necessarily be as rigid in following something like you may have to be if you follow another flight path. That's flexibility as well. Let's just say you're really grasping the concepts of a certain area and you're your, your instructors feel very comfortable with you there, they can quickly move on to something else. This is one of the flexibility and one of the benefits of part 61. So understanding these kind of things, flexibility, how flexible is your lifestyle currently right now? Your availability of time. How important is it to you that you want to pick the instructor that you want specifically versus one that may be assigned to you? How important is it for you to have flexibility in your training? If you are already nailing power on and power off stalls or certain types of landings and you want to move on to something else, you can easily do that and easily get, move on to the next thing. How important is that to you in, in terms of your learning style and the way that you learn things? These are all the things that you want to consider when considering part 61. Boom! But if those are some of the benefits, then what are some of the cons? It can't all be gravy. Nothing in life is all perfect and gravy without a downside, without any kind of disadvantages. So let's talk about some of the disadvantages that may come along with part 61. Well, we just mentioned one. We talked about how there is a, a higher flight minimum requirement in terms of hours. So you're going to have to put in a little bit extra work. So always consider that. Have a little bit more hours just to meet those qualifications. Remember, it's 250 on the port 61 to get your commercial versus the 190 on the port 141. So that's one thing. Secondarily, it's also too less structured. So just we talked about how it's going to be the flexibility. Some people thrive off of structure. This is where having a strong sense of self-awareness comes into play. It's the reason why this channel is called Leadership Mindset. Part of being a leader is having a strong sense of self-awareness. You need to understand what type of person you are. How do you learn best? Some people learn really well when things are structured. Hey, I know exactly what's asked of me. I know what I need to do. They execute, boom, done it. Maybe you've had a background in the past where you've had a lot of structure. Maybe you're former military. Maybe you've had jobs in the past. Whatever it may be where you enjoy structure, you feel like you thrive in structure. You get a lot done. Where others may kind of like repel against any kind of like rigid structure. They want something a little bit more loose where it gives them an opportunity to, to have those creative juices flowing and think a little bit more freely. And if that is you, then you may want to consider something else. This is where a strong sense of self-awareness and you really got to tap into those leadership skills that you all have. That you got to get in tune to those to make sure that you're picking the right one that's based on you. So if you do not, if you do not like not having structure, then you may not want to consider part 161. That can be one of the cons for you. Hey, you hey, you want structure, so you may want to go for another path. That is something to consider. Lastly, and something that piggybacks on that structure with part 61 is that you'll be, of course, spending a lot less time in the classroom than you would if you were to do part 141. Again, all of us have been in just regular basic grammar school, academics, you know, junior high, high school, whatever it may be. So you're familiar with the classroom setting. Ask yourself, did you thrive in that kind of environment? You really enjoyed it? If you did really enjoy it and you really did think it helped you in your learning, then hey, maybe part 61 isn't for you. 
maybe you want to go another path. But if you felt like, no, it was too stuffy, I really didn't like learning in that kind of classroom kind of environment, I'm looking for something different, then maybe explore a little bit and do your research about part 61. Boom! Hey, so let's talk about part 141. If the flight path that you take in terms of your flight training is part 141, you want to know that part 141, of course, is approved by the FAA. It's, they stay on top of the flight schools that are actually administering the Part 141 flight path and training avenue, and they review their curriculum, they audit these schools, they stay on top of it to make sure, of course, everything is on the up and up in terms of the curriculum. But along with that, what comes with that is a tremendous amount of structure. Like we're doing this at this time, and it's very rigid, and you must stick to this curriculum to get you through the program to get you on your way. This is why those hours may be a little bit lower, but of course it's more like you're flying at that curriculum, flying that full time, flying a lot more frequently. So you wanna pause right there and think to yourself, is this something, just based on those first two things, you may be flying more full time, you may be flying more frequently, and it also may be a lot, a lot more structured, and it is a lot more structured, and it is a lot more following the curriculum automatically. Is this something that path that you want to take just knowing those two things or is this something that you want to find an alternative to get you where you want to go? The beauty about aviation, regardless of what your lifestyle is, regardless of what your learning abilities are, there's a path and there's an avenue for you. That's the main thing you want to understand between part 61 and part 141. Regardless of who you are, there's a way for you to get up in the sky and to get that thing swinging and banging, baby. Hey, so under that pro column for part 141, if you try to go that route, we can get, hey, it's a lot more structured. Again, some people thrive in that kind of environment. It's very rigid, it has the curriculum. You may be used to that, hey, you may be thinking to yourself, this is just like high school. This is just like college, I got it, I got it on rock. I'm, I'm ready to thrive, I'm ready to go. And, and not only that, but I'm doing something that I love like learning how to fly versus learning a bunch of random subjects, some of which you may not have been interested in when you were in college or when you were in high school, and it was just part of the curriculum. At least all this curriculum will be centered around something that you're interested in doing, like flying. So keep that in mind as well. So it has that structure. Of course, you know there's less hours on that requirement in terms of the minimum hours there, a little bit less there. That may be, and of course, a lot more classroom-like setting. Again, if that's something you're looking for, then part 141 may be for you. It can't be all gravy, so what are some of the cons for part 141? What we just talked about, it may just be too structured for you. Maybe it's just too structured, too rigid. You don't thrive in that environment. That's not for you. You already understand and have that sense of self-awareness, so maybe you're going to go a different route. Secondarily, you may not be able to pick your own CFI. You may just be assigned one, or so you're not just going to be able to just go out and say, hey, this is the person that your friends used or somebody that you really think highly of or somebody that you want to work with, your next door neighbor or somebody like that, that may be, that is very pliable for you. It's very something that you can do under port 61. That may not be the option at port 141. You're within that flight school and within that program and the, the instructor that you're assigned to, that's the instructor. So again, just like in school, that was the teacher that you got assigned. That was the professor that you got assigned you still was able to make it through. So don't be deterred by that, like that's a bad thing or anything like that, but it is something you definitely wanna be aware of. And one of the biggest cons to part 141 may be the fact that, hey, part time may not be available. The flight school and the way that everything's structured with the curriculum of 141, they may need you to be 10 toes down, flying full time, flying X amount of times a week, et cetera, et cetera, just to stay on par with the curriculum and not get left behind. You gotta ask yourself, is that something that your schedule, that your lifestyle, your availability, does it lend itself for you doing that? And if it does not, then you really wanna reconsider. So those are the kinds of things. You wanna check in, check both ports, check the flight schools in your nearby area, see what they offer, and don't just take it as 141, 61. Explore what are some of the criteria and what some of the things that they offer under their 61 or 141 type of flight path. So you really understand your research and you understand what you're doing in terms of the flight path that you choose and then you can go straight ahead with it. If you're one of my young ballers and you're thinking about going from high school straight of course into flying, then you may want to consider something like part 141. If you're trying to be a career pilot, start off transition immediately into it and then of course have those 
lower kind of flight hours is required versus the port 61 and then being able to get your flight path in terms of your career path to the airlines as quickly as possible so you can meet a lot of those requirements maybe 141 is for you since you're coming right out of high school or that college environment wherever you may be and you already used to a lot of structure to begin with so it's already conducive to the way you've been learning before hey get going to college you want to go to flight school, baby, and swing and bang that thing one time. Boom! Hey, if you remember nothing else from this video, remember this. Whether you choose part 61 or part 141, you know what the secret is? It doesn't matter. Because you can go whatever career path you want to go to, regardless of which one you choose. You can still go to the airlines if you choose part 61. You can go to the airlines if you choose part 141. You can do a variety of different aviation careers regardless of what path you choose. And then most importantly, when you get ready to do that check ride, the check ride is gonna be the same. They're gonna require you to perform the aircraft and the maneuvers and everything the same exact way, the same exact check ride, regardless of what path that you took. That's why it really doesn't matter, but it matters in regards to your lifestyle and your learning abilities, not necessarily what you're gonna get out of it, thinking that one path is gonna make you a much better pilot than the other path. It's just all about creating different avenues because they understand that everyone is different. Everyone learns differently. Everyone has different lifestyles. So you need to have different paths for people to get to that pot of gold at the end of the road. However you get there, just get there. I don't care if it's part 61 or part 141. I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swing it and bang it. That thing. Boom! Choose part 61 or part 141. Just don't choose part 69 because that's not gonna help you become a pilot. It may help you in some other areas of life, but not becoming a pilot. Love you one time. Subscribe to the channel.